Hello, Grace Church friends. This is Kathleen doing the, <clears throat> the devotional today. Just wanted to say how much I miss all my friends from Grace Church seeing you all in person so terribly. <clears throat> so I'm coming to you <clears throat> via the internet and I hope you uh, don't mind listening to me talk about something here that is is going to sound a little bit crude, a little bit vulgar, uh, but really it isn't. And I'm going, uh, the reason I chose this is because it's actually <clears throat> uh, related to the coronavirus situation that's going on right now, and also to theology, and some questions that I know I have about Christian theology and where we stand with it right now. So <clears throat> I've chosen an article that was written by the Reverend Gregory Rickle, who is an Episcopal uh, bishop in Washington State. And this is, uh, article was on Facebook, so I'm just going to read excerpts from it and tell you why I think they are so um, meaningful to me and uh, maybe challenge you to think about them a little bit too. And <clears throat> so here we go. It's called, his, he uh, titles his article, A Peeing Section in the Pool. And it was, uh, he got this phrase from an epidemiologist who, um, who used this as an analogy to the way we're trying, our society is trying to cope with the coronavirus right now. And that we, uh, we think that we can just separate off certain people, certain areas, and let them be contaminated, but we'll be fine. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> he says, uh, you may be wondering where he's going with this um, and uh, thinking that he should stay out of politics or stay in his own lane, which is usually translated to, you want me to stay out of your politics and stay out of your lane. Um, but he says he's going to look theologically at the church, which is his lane. <clears throat> He's looking at um, one of the divides in our country and a divide in Christianity. He says, we've developed an over, <clears throat> on a more overarching level two distinct and nearly opposite theologies. One, he calls personal freedom theology, which is uh, recognized in people who carry protest signs saying things like, Jesus is my vaccine, or um, it's my God-given right to blah 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 like get my nails done take my dog to the um get its hair done whatever uh he says it's <clears throat> it's kind of like the old tom t hall song that says me and jesus got our own thing going but basically it just means i'm saved nothing else matters uh unless of course you could help me and then then you might matter uh, the other side of this coin is communion theology it's based on the totally opposite idea that the common good and the good of all is the gospel. Uh, for example, things like best, blessed are the meek or do unto others are uh, parts of communion theology. And they, uh, that contrast is that we, uh, people who believe in the communion bio, uh, theology think that everyone matters. <clears throat> he says it's a far healthier <coughs> uh, reality, but we probably have to live somewhere in between the two. Um, he says that the, that peeing section of the pool uh, comment, does that really work, is what clarified those ideas in his mind. Because he says that in this pampered and generally more everyday selfish nation, we have the idea that this virus will recognize us as the greatest and therefore will respect our borders. <clears throat> so how's that working for us? Well... Uh, just assuming that the virus will stop at our border and go somewhere else is probably not going to work. Um, but he, he concedes that it's not easy to be a leader of any group of humans at this time. There's so little to, to be that we know, and we're flying blind to a degree. But one thing that he uh, <clears throat> emphasizes is that it takes all of us working together to have a chance of beating this. And well, we're just not very good at that. <clears throat> so, 
we've got to quit stigmatizing people such as the elderly and saying that, <clears throat> for instance, that uh, the most vulnerable are just going to, <clears throat> are, um, are, are that way because it's their own fault. Uh, they shouldn't have eaten so much. They shouldn't have gotten hypertension. They shouldn't have got diabetes. They shouldn't have gotten old. Why did you get old? Take responsibility. <clears throat> well, he believes in personal responsibility, but he believes that that personal responsibility calls us to a different response. <clears throat> and that response is that we have to work together and um, to face this crisis and turn the tide. The church has to give us a consistent face of Christianity to offer this. And when there we have this, this divide as far as theology where we part of us are saying we just want to do what is our God-given right, and the other side is saying <clears throat> I'm looking to the community, to the whole, I want to act all of us together so that we'll be stronger. It's... It's confusing, but Christianity is a faith, not with rights, but with calls. We should spend less time on what our personal right is and more time on the call of the gospel. And for me right now, and this is a part I agree with him with, <clears throat> in this time, Christianity is a faith, the origin of which comes from, directly from, sacrifice perhaps one of the greatest sacrifices ever. <clears throat> so why is our theology one of entitlement or pre uh, preference or avoiding sacrifice, especially for others? He believes that the gospel can have a saving effect for us in these days, even though we are far away from it now. <clears throat> so I offer at this moment a prayer for all of us, that we can find a way to come together in this time where we really need to think about what our Christian faith calls us to do. Thanks for listening, and I miss you all, and hope to see you soon in real life, but in the meantime, please be safe.